Hi everyone, my name is uh, Johan Alatambi. I'm a solutions architect uh, at WSO2, uh, mainly focusing on the identity and access management uh, product. Uh, so my topic for today's session is the integrated supply chain for CIA. Yeah. So I would like to start uh, this session with uh, these two um, uh, quotes that I extracted from Gartner in one of their uh, reports on customer identity and access management back in 2018. Uh, so the first one, what uh, uh, what it says is uh, that the current commercially available CIM tools you would find um, fail to address the most sophisticated requirements for user experience, compliance, privacy, and fraud detection. And also they go on to say that CIAM offerings need to be more developer friendly and uh, empower the developers um, in, in order to uh, build the capabilities as a way to continuously adapt to new customer and business needs. So based on this, uh, these uh, quotes, um, and, and of course, WSO2's experience. WSO2 has set its objective uh, for its uh, identity and access management product uh, to become the number one developer focused CIM solution. Um, WSO2 recognizes that a CIM solution is not just like a one off event. Uh, the C a CIM project is like a journey. And, and the most important participants in this journey are the uh, developers. So WSO2's mission is basically to empower and enable these developers uh, with tools that uh, allow them to easily build CIM solutions that are efficient. So, just to give you a very high level overview of what WSO2 identity and access management is. So WSO2 identity server is the number one open source IAM product you would find in the market today. Um, it, it, its strong capabilities are around identity federation, strong custom authentication, or you could also call it multi-factor authentication, adaptive, access control, or you could also call it uh, dynamic or context-based authentication, and of course, API security. Uh, some of the highlights uh, about the WSO identity server. So we have more than 200 plus production customers using the WSO2 identity server. Uh, we have more than 500 plus educational institutes that are using WSO2 identity server. Uh, these include direct and indirect customers through various other technology providers as well. Uh, around the globe, we manage more than 250 million uh, user identities. And uh, of course, there are more open source deployments that we may or may not know about. So uh, we estimate more than 1,000 uh, open source deployments using WSO2 Identity Server. And while WSO2 IES is being used across many verticals, uh, we prominently find uh, these verticals using WSO2 Identity Server heavily. Uh, that is the financial sector, government, healthcare, education, telecom, and retail. And of course, uh, following the uh, open source principles of Apache 2, we also have you know, an open source community. And uh, this open source community is continuously growing. And we welcome all of you to join our uh, WSO2 Identity Server Slack channel uh, if you want to you know, know more about identity and access management and the product as well. So the objective of uh, CIAM is to acquire new customers, retain existing customers and increase uh, business revenue by leveraging identity data. Uh, what CIAM can give you is an identity-centric ecosystem to nurture an anonymous visitor to a, a well-known customer. In this age of the customer, identity has kind of become the glue that um, uh, glue that kind of connects uh, the user interactions across uh, various systems. 
Uh, so one of the major challenges that we find in organizations today uh, is uh, because they have multiple channels that the customers can interact with, uh, they tend to have multiple siloed identity systems. So that means identities are duplicated and access management rules are duplicated across different systems. So, um, uh, you know, building a single unified profile across all of these systems is a challenge. So there are systems like marketing databases, CRM systems, uh, identity data, data stores, et cetera. There are the customer identities uh, splayed across everywhere. Uh, the next challenge that we see, uh, especially uh, in, in, in recent times, is the concern about uh, data security and privacy. Especially you would, uh, since uh, most of you are joining from the EMEA region, you would know how important it is to be GDPR compliant and uh, what organizations are looking for from a CIM product to make their GDPR compliance story easy and successful. So these are the, this is the list of uh, capabilities of a CIM product. So I believe the capability list here is self-explanatory. So I won't go into the details. Um, of course, there are differences in the functional capabilities uh, when it comes to a CIM product versus a workforce IAM product. Uh, for example, in a CIM product, the, the way the consumers would onboard uh, to a CIM solution would be mostly using self-registration or uh, social login, uh, et cetera. But uh, in a workforce IAM solution, maybe the administrators will uh, create the user account and invite the users to access various systems. Uh, similarly, if you take a talk about authentication, uh, users would use uh, uh, you know, um, uh, things like for multi-factor authentication, they would use a, a SMS OTP or mobile authentication uh, and things like that. Whereas in a, in a workforce IAM scenario, they might be using you know, uh, access cards uh, or you know, smart cards and things like that. So there are clear differences in the, in the uh, uh, functional capabilities between uh, the two solutions. Uh, but what makes CIM stand apart from workforce IAM is its non-functional uh, requirements. So we call these non-functional requirements as the five pillars of CIM. Um, so your, your, your customer's experience is only the tip of the iceberg. So underneath that, uh, to build that right level of user experience, you need to worry about these five pillars. So let's look at what these five pillars are. So number one is scalability. So in a CIM scenario, typically, the difference between the average load in your uh, CIM system and the peak load uh, is very high. Um, so if you go to provision resources statically for, to handle this peak load, uh, you won't uh, be um, economically viable. So therefore you may need to uh, have dynamic scaling behavior for your resources based on the demand. For example, a, a customer in the financial uh, industry uh, we work with has around 1.5 million uh, customers, consumers. Uh, and they have uh, around 350,000 logins uh, in a day uh, during peak hours. That is around three hours, three specific hours in a day, they have around 350,000 uh, logins, which gives around 1,700 logins per minute uh, each, each minute. However, there are two days of a month, which is namely the payday and the next day after the payday, where they have around 300,000 logins per minute. Uh, so you can see the, 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 how, how much of a difference you have between the average and the peak. So the CIM solution should be able to handle both the average and the peak uh, in an economically viable way. Uh, then the next pillar is basically security and privacy. So as I mentioned, um, customers or con customers, consumers, they need to have absolute confidence that the data they provide the data they share with your solution is stored and protected and only shared with other applications, especially third-party applications with the customer's consent. And it is not misused. Um, any misuse of customer data 
uh, whether it's deliberate or not, can significantly damage your brand equity. Uh, for example, uh, you won't, uh, I, I think you won't forget uh, uh, some uh, few years back how Yahoo was in the midst of a series of data breaches uh, and it costed around 350 million US dollars in their sale of their important services uh, to Verizon. Uh, the next pillar is usability. So consumers demand a low friction uh, experience during uh, user registration as well as user login. And there are other users in a CIM solution as well. Uh, for example, the CXOs. So the CXOs expect dashboards that would give them business oversight on how the entire customer uh, experience is looking like and how the solution is functioning. Then we move on to, uh, I would say, the most important aspect uh, in these non-functional non requirements is the next two, that is extensibility and APIs and integration. So extensibility and developer focus goes hand in hand. Organizations have to continuously improve the level of consumer engagement uh, and adapt to technology, business models, competitions, regulations, and customer preferences. The CIM solution must be agile enough and follow uh, an event-driven architecture that can flex to meet both new business opportunities and new challenges. Hence, a CIM solution needs to address common CIM use cases out of the box while its architecture should permit extending the solution for unique business requirements. Uh, with APIs and integrations, uh, a, a, an IEM solution alone is not going to give you CIA. Yeah, if someone says that, that is a myth. So you need to build an integrated platform that includes marketing platforms, CRM systems, e-commerce platforms, fraud detection systems, risk engines, content management systems, data management platforms, et cetera, in order to build a single unified customer profile. 60% of digital transformation uh, journeys of organizations start with integration. And a key enabler for this integration is APIs. So all the components, it's, it's vital that all the components should expose their respective functions via APIs. For example, if you take a, a consumer facing website where a consumer comes to download a white paper from the website, the website would call a, a API that is exposed from the CIM uh, to create a lead. Uh, this API will in turn call another API uh, in a system like HubSpot uh, for the lead creation. Uh, when a user, uh, uh, when, a, when a potential uh, uh, customer comes and registers as a, as a, as a customer, uh, uh, another API in the CIM solution is called, that is self-registration. And this API may have integrations with system like, systems like uh, Evident, Jumio, etc., for identity verification. And in turn, it might also call the uh, API on HubSpot to convert the lead to a customer. And similarly, it might have other integrations to systems like Salesforce in order to create a customer record. It might also push some events to solutions like Mixpanel uh, through APIs for custom analytics, uh, which um, uh, using which you can do things like A-B testing to try out different use experiences and pick what is best for your um, solution. So securing these APIs at the edge as well as at the internal uh, you know, services level, microservices level is very important. So over time, uh, We've spoken to hundreds of customers and thousands of prospects. And from all of those conversations, what we've learned is that different customers are at different maturity levels in their CIM journey. So we identify five different maturity levels uh, in the CIM journey. So the first level that we identify is basically 
called non-existent or level zero. So this is where all the businesses start their CIM journey. At this level, businesses don't worry about tracking customer interactions. Uh, probably they don't even have an online portal uh, or they don't do e-commerce online. Uh, even if they have a website, it might most probably be a static website where the customers can find some you know, information that is useful, but not have any kind of uh, dynamic interaction capabilities. They might use uh, you know, tools like WhatsApp, Messenger, and even traditional phone calls to accept orders. Uh, and there may be no order tracking system for the customers as well. Typically, restaurants and uh, city taxi services, etc., operate in this kind of a model. So the next level up is what we call uh, managed identity, that is level one. Um, So in, in the managed identity level, uh, you will have uh, many CIM capabilities. Um, however, different organizations will use different sets of CIM capabilities. So some organizations may use very simple capabilities like you know, uh, self-registration and uh, 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 authentication using username password, and that's it. Whereas some other organizations might use uh, social login identity analytics, multi-factor authentication, et cetera. So there's a broad spectrum of capabilities uh, from which you can choose what is required for your organization. But the, the important thing in this level is that still there are no uh, platforms like CRM platforms, marketing solutions, and those you know, customer uh, management platforms uh, in your, in your uh, organization. So, most of the customers that we see uh, are in this phase and they remain in this phase for many years before they realize that they need a uh, custom IM solution. The more they are in this, the more they start building isolated uh, identity silos uh, where they will be duplicating uh, user data in uh, user data and access control data in multiple systems. So the next level uh, we have is the siloed uh, uh, level two. Uh, in this level, um, you will have many customer platforms like CRM, marketing platforms, etc. However, the deficiency that we see in this level is that these systems are not connected. So each system has its, has its disconnected data, data source and it is very difficult to build a unified profile of a customer. So for example, generating a report across uh, multiple data sources involves a uh, high labor intensive processes. And sometimes even after those processes, you will fail to find any kind of correlation among the profiles of your customers. In this phase, organizations start worrying about CIM systems. They will see the benefits of building a connected CIM system and also see the challenges uh, in the current system uh, in order to get to that level. So that next level is what we call the connected uh, maturity level. That's level three. Um, so in this level, uh, the CIM system is integrated with multiple other platforms. What this helps you to do is build a unified view or unified uh, profile, or we also call it a 360 degree view of the customer. You can track the complete life cycle of the user and how the customer is interacting with the system. In this level, progressive prof profiling is a key feature. Uh, in order to do continuous profiling of the customer and build that unified profile for the customer. So this, once you build that unified profile, this profile may be used by uh, various systems for various things. For example, uh, if you take a CIM solution, an IAM solution, you can use this unified profile in order to do things like risk-based authentication. 
in order to build this uh, unified profile you may get various inputs you may get it from the customers themselves as well as you may have things like advanced things like machine learning and artificial artificial intelligence uh, for example if you look at google id or apple id what they do is exactly this so basically by having a unified profile for the user across all their products they are able to efficiently track customer journeys uh, by various devices and various platforms and and apis and integration capabilities are a key ingredient uh, are key ingredients uh, for this connected level uh, most organizations that we see don't have this kind of capability to start with so they mostly depend on you know si system integrators who have experience uh, in order to do this kind of integrations so the final level uh, is what we call the optimized level the key feature that we see in this level is the omni channel environment uh, of uh, organizations so when when an organization has an omni channel environment multi multiple di channels digital and physical to interact with the brand customers need to get a seamless use experience for example if you look at amazon they provide a seamless e-commerce experience using the amazon website the amazon mobile app uh, alexa and kindle and uh, if you look at amazon bookstore Uh, the objective uh, of amazon bookstore was to bring the same digital experience to the physical world we interestingly interestingly we have coined that term called the digital world uh, if you visit an amazon bookstore you will see book reviews ratings and many other features that were traditionally uh, uh, considered digital only and same with uh, amazon go so with amazon go basically you can walk into an amazon store buy uh, anything you want put it into your cart check out and uh, basically you don't need to pull out a card from your your wallet so uh, your identity is recognized as soon as you walk into the store and uh, your or the debits are made to your account straight away so that's the experience it can provide you Uh, and at this level predictive analytics with machine learning and ai are also key features so this is basically the summary of the uh, phases and how you progress through the phases so now the key question is how you get from the non existent phase to the optimized phase so this is where we believe a cim supply chain can help you get to the optimized phase uh, in general terms a supply chain is a system of organizations people activities information and other resources uh, involving um, supplying a product or service to a customer from inception to delivery so in the industrial supply chain we have five main phases that you can see in the uh, top uh, image similarly we can find uh, an analogy for digital products and services as well so in the digital supply chain also we have five different phases so what are those phases so the first phase we identify is the discovery phase so in this phase uh the main uh, the main thing you would do is analyze your business and come up with the functional and non functional requirements and then you would uh find components either they could be existing components that you have in house or maybe you can uh, modify and re reuse certain components or else you would decide that you will need to build certain components in house or you may purchase components of the shelf so the one of the important decisions in this phase is the buy versus build debate uh, what 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 should be bought and what should be built uh, for example uber uh, 
pay, paid uh, uh, Google Maps. Uh, so Uber uses Google Maps services. And during the period of 2016 and 2018, for that two year period, they paid 52 million US dollars in order to uh, consume their service. However, compared to the revenue of Uber in 2019, which was uh, a whopping 14.15 billion USD, this 52 million USD is like an insignificant amount. So there you can see the decision to you know, buy something uh, makes much more sense. So uh, a report from a marketing firm called McKenzie claims uh, technology companies on average have around 125 suppliers. So then we have the development phase. So I think that's very straightforward. So once you identify your requirements and the, the various components you're going to integrate, integrate the, in the development phase, basically you develop those new components, you modify the existing components and you do the integration with third party components in order to build the IAM platform. Then we move to the deployment phase. In the deployment phase, this is where you would address a majority of your non-functional requirements, such as security, scalability, performance, fault tolerance, etc. Then we move to the onboarding phase. So in the onboarding phase, once the system is live, your customers are going to come and onboard and your customers are going to expect a frictionless onboarding and logging, logging experience. And it's important to continuously monitor the customer experience in this phase. And that feedback needs to be provided. Uh, the feedback loop has to go into continuously improving the customer experience. So the important thing that you need to know in any CIM project is this, uh, this uh, chain is not a one-off process. Most organizations do multiple iterations of this process in order to build their CM solution. Otherwise, practically, this may be a never-ending process the, uh, based on experience, the way how uh, new requirements uh, get introduced and existing requirements evolve. You will never be able to uh, complete the project if you go in a typical waterfall approach. So what are the takeaways? Uh, so basically, uh, as I mentioned, the goal or objective of CIM is to uh, drive revenue growth by leveraging identity data to acquire and retain existing, uh, re acquire new customers and retain existing customers and reduce the churn. Organizations need to continuously improve the level of consumer engagement and adapt to the changes in technology, business models, competitions, uh, regulations, and customer preferences. An agile event-driven CIM platform can flex to meet both new business opportunities and new business challenges. A CIM system should be able to address common CIM needs out of the box while its architecture should permit extending the platform to address unique business requirements. As a CIM solution, uh, solution matures, uh, a properly designed digital supply chain helps you get from a non-existent maturity level to the optimized maturity level. So WSO2's vision in uh, uh, CIM is to build an API driven develop a focused IAM product to address uh, the most uh, widely used CIM use cases and also be, uh, be completely extensible to meet your unique business requirements. 